This is the Gold Club Podcast with Steve Vessel, Ace, and Jeff Metal Dave. Oh, thank you, Carrie. I always called you Carrie. <laughs> thank you, Carrie. Thanks, Carrie. Oh, Carrie. That's Corey. It's Corey. Corey in the corner. Corey actually has a microphone this week, so if he wants to chime in, now we have to actually hear him instead of just repeating what you're going to say. Yeah. You're, yeah. You're, you're welcome. You, you got a raise. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Gore Club Podcast, everyone. I am Steve Vessel. I'm Death Metal Dave. I'm Ace. Ace is the place. Okay. <laughs> so far, we're needed. What did you guys go? What did you all do? Go see? What you know? What did you all get into this week? Last week? Whatever. Uh, I don't even remember. Wow, that's good. <laughs> it was it was it's it's great. Such a blur. <laughs> I don't know. I do. I have to admit, I, I see so many movies that so many just slipped through my brain. Yeah, same here. We've talked about this before on the Cup podcast. Is like what movies resonate with me, or that I've seen a hundred times. Or, you know, it's like that's the that's what I want. I haven't seen anything that makes me like I want to see that again. I don't. I can't think of. I can't, think of I can't remember anything that I watched in the last. I saw Dune. Movie. Oh yeah, I saw that. too. That's a sci-fi movie. I think. Didn't we already talk about this? We did. Oh okay. Yeah. We, we talked about my awful movie theater experience last week. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you finally. Yeah, that's right. Did you finally watch Halloween I went, Kills? I went to no. <laughs> God damn it. I was going to do that this weekend. I'm going to go early to every fucking showing of everything that's before it gets pulled from the theater. So uh, I missed Malignant, which pissed me off because I've just been so busy. It's okay. God damn, Dave. He's judging me if you can see this. No, it's, it's okay. You can you can miss Malignant. That's fine. Uh, what else is on there? I, I went and saw Dune today. I'm going to go see Halloween Kills tomorrow. Uh, I'm supposed to have a business meeting tomorrow, so I'll do that afterwards. And then uh, I don't know. Well, I want to see Ghostbusters. That's what I want to see. Uh, I meant to oh, see yeah. that tonight, but then uh, you know, there's, there's other people in this room that would not appreciate that. I thought that's mm-hmm. what you were going to see today was Ghostbusters. <laughs> okay, this is the funny thing. I took a picture of the stupid because I love movie swag. Yeah, you know, when you go to the movie, you go to the premiere, and they give you a keychain or I, I've got I've like got a slither. Like a, I don't know, like slime ball that they gave me at the theater. Today, when I went and saw Dune, <laughs> they gave me the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man popcorn holder. Yeah. It it's awesome. awesome. Yeah, it looked great. Yeah. So I took a picture of it. I was like, hey, I'm at the theater. And I didn't realize until somebody uh, like started texting me. I was like, oh, everyone thinks I saw Scar- <laughs> Ghostbusters today. <laughs> no, you didn't. You <laughs> no. saw Dune. I saw Dune. <laughs> Doing it. Yeah. It's I great. I haven't watched anything new but I did Fucking watch. Old person over here. I know. Well, I had some. I had, I bought uh, that movie, The Editor, on Blu-ray. I don't think I've seen that. It's like a, it's like a parody of like every Italian like giallo movie ever made. So is it a real parody, or is it just somebody really trying to make a movie? No, it's like a. It's like good, but it's funny, and it's like super over the top, violent, like. There's like a scene where this all sounds great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's it's really good, honestly. Uh, there's like a part. I swear to God, there's like a part of the movie where somebody like rips a woman's face off, and then her skeleton is like screaming, and then he's like, "Oh no!" And then he like shoves it back on and puts her face back on, and it's like all fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's so dead alive, like brain yeah, dead. It's sounds. very dead alive. Yeah, okay, it's, yeah, yeah, it's really good. I highly suggest checking it out. It's called The Editor. That's um, a- I watched that, and I watched that movie called Highway to Hell from the '90s. Oh my god, I watched that last week. <laughs> How the hell did that happen? I think Dave, a lot did of you watch people, it too. That's so oh, fucking weird. I, I think it's should. on streaming on something right now. I own it. Um, I think it has, I saw it on Hulu. Yeah, it has like the whole Stiller families in it. Yep, like Ben Stiller, his dad, his mom, um, Gilbert Gottfried plays Hitler <laughs> in the movie in Hell. Yeah, CJ Graham is the uh, is the cop. Yeah. Like it's, like, it's it's his only other movie besides uh, Friday the Thirteenth Part Six. Yeah, Hell Cop. Yeah, Hell Cop. <laughs> <laughs> and Lita Ford is in that movie. <laughs> yeah, she is. It's all. It's just like she just. It's just like her character is just like boobs. Yeah, like that's what she's supposed to be doing. It's like well, perfectly cast. Yeah, <laughs> she's and, awesome. Uh, I think it's like Rob Lowe's brother. Chad Lowe. Chad Lowe. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I wish he would have been in like what was that Tu Wong Fu or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But like yeah, it's it's like a really underrated movie. I think it's pretty good. I'm gonna add it the to effects, my watch list. The effects are amazing. Actually, yeah, it yeah. looks really it looks really good too. Yeah. God damn, who directed that? Is it um um um? Can you look that up for us, Corey or Dave, whomever has the second? Uh, 
But uh, I it has know. a very memorable VHS box cover. It does actually. Yeah. I did. I, that was one of the reasons I didn't watch it as a kid because I that that weird stuck on badly Photoshop before Photoshop oh, face yeah. of the like, of the demon <laughs> sideways. Yeah, and then I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. I'll probably own it. <laughs> I it. mean, the guy's name is Ate De Jong. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, yeah. I mean, oh yeah, that guy. Yeah, that guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's, he, he was nominated for a Golden Calf Award. Uh, is it, it sounds like Indian, like I, India. I mean, maybe. I don't oh know. yeah. Well, I, I love scrolling through like streaming sites, and after a while, things are like not in the right and like not not in English, and I'm like, oh, this might be actually getting actually better. And some of those movies are fucking awesome, man. Yeah. He's Dutch. Okay, I'm totally a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, so I I went back and I went I rewatched our uh, Night of the Demons episode on YouTube, and I re- <laughs> I cannot believe I did this. I fucking okay. Like we get going, and I'm like, "Yeah, Night of the Demons, 1989." How did no one stop me in the middle of the podcast and slap me with their you laptop? You were on a uh, roll. I wasn't going. <laughs> Not even close. Who cares? Who cares? Uh, we're wrong about things. We're oh, allowed to be wrong. I, I don't care. I love being like schooled on YouTube or in the comments or whatever. But like that one was, I was like, I what thought the Halloween fuck? Four came out in the 90s. Apparently, <laughs> it didn't. It came out the same year as Pumpkinhead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it did. It did. So it I was, did. I was wrong. You didn't stop me. Who gives a shit? Uh, I'm wrong yeah. sometimes. I'll admit it. Oh, I'm man, great. Do that. I yeah. mispronounce stuff all the time too. I well, probably, yeah. I probably said Giallo wrong or something. Then Piranha. Piranha. You said Giallo like, perfectly, <laughs> actually, even for an English speaking American. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about Godsmack. No. <laughs> Absolutely like, not. Voodoo was invented in 1999 by the band Godsmack. <laughs> and I quit. Bye, everybody. Doom, this is the last doom, episode. Doom, 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 doom. What the fuck, guys? All right, fine. Uh, we're talking about I'm voodoo. Back Stop. Again. Stop. <laughs> just, just. God damn it. It's going to get right, pulled so for like rights. Yeah. All right. So we're talking about voodoo as a voodoo? genre. Voodoo. 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 Remind you me do. the babe. <laughs> <laughs> well, that doesn't count. We suck. Yeah, oh. it doesn't count at all. Count at all. But uh, <laughs> so, all right, we're going to go through a brief history of voodoo. A day. brief, brief history of voodoo. And I think you have some notes, Steve. I'm here to correct you. Go. I can't wait. I got a shit ton of notes. So if either one of you or all, all uh, Corey, now you can chime in and go wrong. Uh, so, I'll, I'll start this off because I made all these notes. <sighs> American voodoo, not to be confused with New Orleans hoodoo, by the way, or Santeria. Layman's always seem to mix it up in the movie and put it in a movie blender and just spoot it out everywhere. That's pretty much what I wrote. Because yeah. that's that's what they do. Oh yeah, I know. We're gonna go over a lot of that. Somebody crap. somebody gets a, somebody gets an idea and they're like, "What is that? Voodoo? Black magic? Oh, we'll throw that in there. It'll scare all the white people." Oh god, and that's exactly where we're gonna be going with a lot of this episode. And uh, not to be confused with New Orleans, actually. New Orleans voodoo is also in Louisiana voodoo, also voodoo, and also known as Creole voodoo. Uh, let's see. So the history of this and what David brought up before the podcast is voodoo, is hoodoo. Uh, slaves from Africa and the Caribbean mixed voodoo, which is like, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's V-O-D-O-U. Yeah. So however you want to pronounce that. And, there, and there's V-O-D-U-N. This is true. Voodoo. Uh, Christianity, mainly Roman Catholic uh, forms that were worshipped by the French. It's like it's a really convoluted fucking thing. Yeah, they they all just kind of put it all together when from like the West, like I said, the West African part, and then they all when they got they gets to the New Orleans. I said it correctly, by the way. Eventually, <laughs> eventually. No, no, I said New Orleans correctly this time. Uh, and then it's just like a mishmash of Catholicism, these belief systems. I, it's, somebody I actually saw when I'm digging through my notes, was like, someone's like, oh, this is one of the first American religions. I'm like, I don't know if that's, did you forget about a whole native country that used to came before us? Yeah. But it's a really strange thing. Um, many will point out the connections to Catholicism, though it was never banned or restricted, or like, but they, put, they would restrict black people um, from having large gatherings. So that definitely helped kind of, Kick it back. It's one of the few religions that that weren't uh, abolished. Which yeah. is kind of interesting. Well, yeah, it was. They it was uh, you know like Catholicism was forced upon them. Yeah, exactly. And then it was <laughs> that's that, that mixed that's, together with what they were already practicing. So one thing that I found that I thought was interesting was about the, the Haitian Revolution in 1791. Now, don't don't fall asleep on me. Just listen. Just <laughs> hear me out. Hear me out because it has a lot to do with what happened in America with voodoo. So. In uh, 1791, uh, there were lots of uh, slaves because uh, Haiti was uh, occupied by the French, right? 
So uh, they had a ritual. We, they, <laughs> they, they had they had a, uh, a a voodoo a voodoo ritual ceremony, and on that night it got really got really uh, lots of storms. It got really got really bad outside, and they took it as a sign, like, "Hey, we should kill all these white motherfuckers and get them out of our our, our country." Hell yeah! And they did. <laughs> oh wow, Poseidon! And, and it was it was it was a revolution on their part. Now, when this happened, you know you got to think like. Word of this reached America, and uh, you know the, the French had been overthrown, and now they're gone from ha- Haiti, and now they're their own government. So, where did this got to America? And that's what really scared people, because you know, at that point, Americans still own slaves, so they're 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 terrified. Like, oh, this voodoo religion gave the slaves a right to 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 empower themselves, to free themselves. So they were really. Really scared of this at this point. We can't have that around here. Yeah, which which shocks me. You say it was never never you know banned in any at any point. Not outright. Not outright. Well, they would have to practice in secret, which even added to its it's evil kind yeah. of factor bullshit. Whenever we were in New Orleans, um, we did like one of the tours, one of the more serious ones about like the cemeteries and stuff, and um, and like they bring up they brought up the whole the fact that you know it's like a mixture of different uh, religions and. You know, there's people that actually practice voodoo, and they were like, you can go to, like, a church down here, you know, but, you know, if you're going to walk in there and be, like, treat it like a gift shop and be like, where's the little dolls I can point? And, like, people are going to get mad at you and ask you to leave. Right. Like, As they should. Yeah, it's a, it's a thing that people actually do that's a respected <laughs> thing. It's not just, you know, like yeah, I mean, you a can't, movie device. <laughs> you can't just go into a church and be like, I got all this water. Who the fuck is that guy on the – why is he hanging up there? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could. That would be hilarious. If anybody wants to do that, please record yourself. Oh, please. Um, uh, wait, <laughs> side note. Dave went to a wedding one time where they had the Buddy Christ painted on a wall. Yeah, dude. That, that church is in the high. <laughs> Islands. I'm not it's kidding. Just Jesus. Everybody like, in this room is like, "What?" <laughs> it's just like because I walked in. I walked in and my a big my, Catholic my, church. Yeah, I walked in. It was my friend's wedding, and I saw saw him like walking around before his wedding. I was like, "Dude!" And he's like, "Oh, buddy, Christ, you saw it too, right?" Oh I was my like, God. "Like, holy shit!" <laughs> oh man. Uh, so I had to just side out on that part. But back uh, to back to voodoo. Yeah. yeah. But oddly enough, I, I found that it wasn't really after until after the Civil War, the one white people find they tried to really suppress it that way. People people were rounded up and they were fined, et cetera, but nobody was killed that you know, on record. Yeah. But it wasn't until like after the Civil War. Before that it was fine. Hmm. So you could have your cliche if you're gonna you know, as far as voodoo is concerned, like chickens and animal sacrifices. Which they still apparently is part of that, uh, of their, you know, their religion. Uh, Let's see. (laughs) White writers at the time tried making claims that voodoo was helping black men communicate with white women. Oh, no. Of course, that's something that they would have found. That's exactly what I found. And I was like, holy crap. And all the things that I'm actually reading are, I I double checked. I just don't go to one (laughs) website and go, sounds good to me, man. Yeah. I don't do that. So that, that was one that kind of disturbed me because, it, but then again, nothing really surprises me when it comes to anybody trying to suppress anybody. Yeah. No, oh, no, you can keep oh, going. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to cite your sources. You didn't go to Breitbart. Oh, that's shit, true. I went, to, I went to Joe Rogan's podcast. Uh, <laughs> it does not have to, okay, from what I found, it does not have a sacred text or a book to pull from. It's actually mainly an oral tradition. The religion is passed from generation to generation by word of mouth. It's mostly matriarchal religion, which also makes, you know, how dare you? Because women fucking rule, and this is not yeah. going to be a thing. A lot of ancient religions were very women empowerment, or they were actually worshiping women deities, gods, and things yeah. like that. Can't have that over here in the Americas. Um, let's see. <laughs> yeah, that's my next note. We can't have women having power. <laughs> the priestesses are known as mothers, and there is with the four phases of the voodoo ritual, which are identified by songs that are sung in preparation, invocation, possession, and farewell. And the songs are supposed to open the gates and allow deities to possess humans, but not necessarily in a bad way. But you yeah. just you spell out the word infidel or possess, you're like, oh, that's an evil thing. It's like, <laughs> wow, man, not all the time. Yeah, <laughs> not every day. Oh, you so, can keep going. Oh, okay. <laughs> you guys can chime in anytime I'm, you I'm want. Waiting, I'm waiting until we get to Live and Let Die, the James Bond film. <laughs> Live and <laughs> Let Die. So we still got another uh, like 250 years till we get to 1932 where White Zombie comes up. <laughs> That's right. We could skip forward a little bit <laughs> to forward. White Zombie, the first the first movie about uh, voodoo that uh, prominently stars Bella Lugosi as a voodoo master. 
<laughs> Bela. Because that's Bela. that's very that's very believable. They're like, we're going to take this religion and put the whitest dude in Hollywood in it. Right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> now this movie was, was made in like what came out in 1932, and is also known to be the very first full length zombie movie of all time, like the yes. first one ever made. Because that's what you know with, with voodoo. There's zombies, not like Walking Dead zombies. They're just mindless no. people. Yeah, one of better my f- controlled. One of the fa- one of my favorite things I read about they were talking about how you know pre Night of the Living Dead zombies were victims, as not so much when Night of the Living Dead comes out as they're the people making you the victim. Oh yeah, like they're you know like they're just you feel sorry for zombies in old the old the original kind of zombie movies, whereas then like George Romero's like no. You're a victim now. <laughs> yeah, he mixed uh, yeah. "I Am Legend," a book by Richard Matheson, and 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 the idea of ghouls. Yeah, and there you go. And yeah. He's like, no, we're doing something different here. Yeah, and uh, if I remember correctly, just from because I had the script upstairs, they didn't even call them zombies in the movie. The original title was the, I think it's the Flesh Eaters, and they called them ghouls throughout the entire script. So. The word zombie, I still haven't really thought about where that came from and how they put it all together, but I mean, it's obvious. Right before that, you had Plague of the Zombies, and then you get that, and it's like, that's completely yeah. fucking different. There's a tagline for this movie that I wrote down, which is, they knew this fiend was practicing zombieism on the natives, but when he tried it on a white girl, the nation revolted. And you're like, <laughs> of course that's a tagline for from 1932. Hell yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> so this is made by the Halperns. Uh, the, the brothers, they wrote in di- and directed, I think produced it, I could be wrong, for like nothing, like $50,000, I think. Yeah. And, they, and I think Bela Lugosi got $5,000 of that. Gosh. That's yeah. A, that's good in 1932 money. Well, that's the thing is like <laughs> he had just done Dracula and I think Murders, Murders in the Room Morgue and the people didn't understand why he would do a low budget film. Yeah. Uh, $5,000 in 1931. <laughs> yeah. Going money. into 32, yeah. Mm. So this is based on The Magic Island by Will Seabrook, who also wrote the definitive book on voodoo at the time. <sighs> so Bella is, yeah, he's the voodoo master. He owns, like, what is a sugar mill? Is that what that yeah, is? Sugar, like sugar cane sugar, mill? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's got nothing but zombie workers. I'm thinking they're trying to tell us something there. Yeah. <laughs> I control you. And then he, he does that hand gesture. Yes, that, he does the hand thing. Yeah, that, is... like Martin Landy <laughs> makes fucking even more famous in uh, Tim Burton's uh, uh, oh, Ed Wood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, this movie was... Uh, was touted by Vanity Fair as the worst movie of 32, so. It was amazing. <laughs> wow, what was the Van- competition? Vanity Fair. <laughs> it was made in 11 days. Yeah. 11 yeah, days. And Bill it- Lugosi's name in the movie is literally murder. <laughs> it's like murder <laughs> legendre or something like that. It's he, Yeah, and we are still talking about this movie. I mean, it's influenced, obviously, Rob Zombie. It's, it's influenced so many people who, do, who, may, who may have never even seen the movie. And you just say white zombie as long as they're not like a metal head. They'd be like, oh, yeah. I oh, yeah. That they're just they like, ha- devil man, <laughs> devil man. No, no, no. <laughs> if they haven't seen the movie, they can go to one of their like 50 horror film collections, and I guarantee they own it. it oh, is. yeah. Everybody owns this, whether they know it or not. Yeah. <laughs> they did a direct, re- uh, I mean, uh, sequel to this called um, Revolt to the Zombies. And I had not seen that movie in forever. I have it on VHS in one of those box sets you were just talking about. I'm looking around the room trying to find it. But I guess, yeah, I couldn't find it. So I didn't watch it, but I remember it's like the t- it's like couldn't you- find it on YouTube, Steve. Oh, man, actually, no, I couldn't. I looked up a couple of movies. Uh, you were talking about King of the Zombies in 1941. Did you bring? Did you actually get a chance yeah, to I, watch? I that? watched. I didn't watch it. Re- I watched it. Uh, like it was on another one of those big box sets of like 50 movies, and I was going through and like actually trying to watch all those like during COVID when everything was Holy closed. Holy shit! So I was like, I'm going to watch all these movies. They've been sitting in my shelf. And King of the Zombies was one of those. Um, and it, it was actually better than I thought it was going to be. Um, okay. It was actually, it's more of a comedy than anything. No way. Uh, <laughs> it's, well, those big box, like, free movies things are, like, all, like, in the public domain. I, I never get past, like, Creature from the Haunted Sea. I'm like, oh, I'm done. Yeah. But it's like, <laughs> it's a, an evil doctor working with foreign spies in control of zombies. And it was also nominated for an Oscar for Best Original Score for a Dramatic Movie. <coughs> Holy shit. King of the Zombies. Um, That's but, rad, man. Yeah, I know. And the the main the main dude that's in it, who's like the comedic relief, um, his name was like Manton Moreland, okay. who was a big comedy guy at the time. And the, basically, the only reason I bring that up is because they put him in the movie because there was a Bob Hope movie out at the time called Ghost Breakers. Yeah. That was a really big deal. And they're like, oh, we got to take this King of the Zombies and make it funny if we're going to make money on this thing. 
So they put him in it as comedic relief, which Ghost Breakers is the original thing that I think Dan Aykroyd was referencing when he made Ghostbusters years later. A little bit, yeah. Kind of, yeah. He was basically, I think at one time they may have called it Ghost Breakers. They did. Before, they film, before Filmation was gonna, not going to sue him or whatever for using yeah. their Ghostbusters that he took. Absolutely, yeah, because Ghostbusters was a live-action television show and a cartoon before yeah. Dan Aykroyd the called real, it Ghostbusters. Yeah. The real Ghostbusters. Yeah, they had to do that for the cartoon. Yeah, yeah. The real Ghostbusters. <laughs> Uh, I also put uh, Walked with a Zombie up there, 1943. That is another uh, sort of, you know, slap voodoo into a movie, and, you know, it's you got, you've got a bad guy. You've got voodoo. Yeah. But uh, this one was a little bit different because it wasn't like, if you watch it, it's if you watch this and White Zombie together, White Zombie's more tongue-in-cheek, like, ooh, voodoo, and this one's more like, this is what happens, and it's more... Um, according to things I've read, it says it's more true to how voodoo was. Now, there's still some corniness and some cliches in there, but better. Yeah. <laughs> they tried. And it's, it's kind tried. of an they, artsy ending. Yeah. Yeah. They, they This, you know, was made in 43. They could have kept with the, the boogeyman sort of theme, but they break away from it a little bit and make it more, more of a... Less, less of a satanic cult, I guess. That's I guess the, the best thing. way to say it. Yeah, it's black. It's a black magic. It's a satanism. It's just like uh, you're mixing and you're mixing all this whole bag of bullshit up, and then you're gonna make a scare tactic out of it. I mean, like you know, like this, yeah, I thought about this as I was writing some notes for this episode. This time last year is when we did. I don't know if it's a coincidence or not. We did our very first witchcraft episode. Oh, oh yeah, that dude didn't know a lot about uh, warlock. I was very upset. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we had uh, we had Jay Gravatt, who is a uh, is a practicing witch, uh, on the show, and uh, we went through it. And, he, and it, to be honest, he was just like, "You want to see a real movie about witchcraft? Watch a documentary." Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's a that's as real as you can get. I don't you know, know, man. He was really on Witchfinder General. We, and of course, you know, <laughs> I think those movies we talked at, we talked about at the time is like there's movies that endear themselves to you, but you know they're not real. Like. Everyone liked the craft. Everyone likes Wicker Man. And all these movies is like, yeah. yeah. And here we are. We're talking about voodoo movies. We've got Plague of the Zombies. Children shouldn't de- play with dead things. Scream, Blackula, Scream. We've got uh, so many up there that aren't really zombie movies. Yeah, I mean not zombie movies, not really voodoo. Not movies. really voodoo. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not... Scream, Bla- Blackula, Scream comes up on a lot of lists. Yeah, um, but uh, you know, you don't have Sugar Hill up there. I don't. It's I did bitch. watch. I watched Sugar Hill. <clears throat> oh fuck yeah! I really wanted to rewatch it because it's on Prime. I yeah. totally forgot to put it up there, <laughs> but I forgot to watch it. Uh, Ace, go into it. It was pretty good. I got home from work today and watched it. Um, fell asleep, missed the end of it. I wish I'm going to go back and watch. So it probably it. has a really good ending. <laughs> it's just, the ending's probably really good. <laughs> but uh, uh, so the woman's name is Diane Sugar Hill, <laughs> and right. she is hell yeah. A uh, gang breaks in, kills her boyfriend Langston. She goes and meets this voodoo woman. She raises Baron Samdi, who's also the same name of the guy from from, from Live uh, and Let uh, Die. Is it? Is it? <laughs> and see, that's from Hoodoo. Baron yeah. Samdi is, now, is not it, is a voodoo. It Samdi, because uh, yeah, I think don't he they? says Samdi in the movie. I always said Samadi. Samedi. Samedi. Yeah, that's what they said in James Bond. That's what I sure. thought. But well, in the movie, he says Samdi like a hundred times. He's well, like, I'm gonna I'm Baron Samdi. I'm gonna play that, that one more. I said it the way you said it, and it's funny because right behind Ace's head is is a board game. From when I was a kid, called Nightmare, and they, mm. they had they had like extension, uh, we call it expansion packs yes. or whatever. And one of them was he's one of the ghosts from Nightmare who you use him in the other one. Oh wow! Like you know, expansion pack. If you never played this game, it's a board game that you play while a you play a VHS, and somebody just gets on there and fucking yells at you, and makes fun of you for being old. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes, my gamekeeper. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that that's that. But and I always thought Baron game. Samdi was just that guy from GoldenEye. From Nintendo 64. <laughs> no, man, he's got Little deeper, did I know. That deeper game is roots awesome. than that. Yeah. That game is fucking awesome. But uh, they raise, so she gets this guy, so they go out in the jungle or in the swamp and raise Baron Samdi, and he comes up and he's like, ha, 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 ha. and he has like his two like dead wives, um, and he raises an army of the dead. That's right. And they have these big silver eyes. <laughs> Like, they just have big pieces of silver in their eyes, and it looks crazy. They're all covered in cobwebs. It looks really cool. And it sounds very fulgular. They're all going around getting revenge on all these guys, and she, like, catches one of these uh, dudes, like, on a dock somewhere, and she's like, 
calls him like a white devil, and you're like, hell yeah. <laughs> like, and they just kill the shit out of him. See, that's the kind of movie that I, want. I need to go buy. I want to own something like that. I, I, Scream, Blackula Scream is one of those rare instances, especially back then, where the sequel is better than the original. I love Blackula, but Scream, Blackula Scream has, for one, Pam Greer, badass. Yes. yes. Uh, William Marshall is, I think he's just found his role, even though he'll never play the character again. It's just, it's, it's shot better, it looks better, the, 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 the soundtrack is badass. All the things that I, you keep hearing me talk about on this podcast are the things that I, I value most. It's like, it's like just a whole mood to the movie. It's just a better movie. And it's directed by the same guy who did like Count Yorga. Yeah. So he knows his shit. Well, I mean, speaking of uh, Sugar Hill, it's directed by uh, Paul Molansky. Who's also known as being a producer? He was the executive producer on Race with the Devil. Oh, a little fond at work. And Police Academy, one through six. <laughs> one through six. <laughs> Seven. No, no, he did mission. He did mission to Moscow too. Oh my God. Oh my. Man, oh. that is an eclectic. How do you do that? I don't know. He also did Return to Oz. Man, this guy had his hands in That's fucking a everything. Movie, Holy shit! Yeah, I mean, that's a movie if you have not seen. I'm and he sure. also he was a writer on Police Academy, but he was uncredited. It oh, means he yeah. paid somebody a lot of money. Yeah, he was in it. Man, the only he, only movie he's ever directed was Sugar Hill. So good job, dude. That's badass. What a great uh, credit to have on your name. Um, I put Plague of the Zombies up there. It's it's that Hammer zombie movie that they made. Very same thing. You got a yeah. white guy who's mixing <laughs> magics because it's not just pure voodoo. And then he raises these people who are workers at his mill on the side of this hill. It's like the plantation over, and he just wants to kidnap white women. And, and but he's white. It's a it's it's actually a really good movie, and the zombies are really awesome looking. Yeah. But it's got nothing to do with real voodoo. Yeah. It has. It's just a horror film, and, I, and I, if you haven't seen it, you really should. I love that movie. But it's it's just the cliches that we're talking about. Children should not play with dead things. Also known as shouldn't. <laughs> shouldn't. Shouldn't. No. Shouldn't. That's a great movie, uh, directed by uh, Bob Clark, written by Alan Ormsky, uh, who also plays Santa in... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he does Christmas Story. Uh, let's see. That came out in, like, 72. So the tagline, I remember this, you're invited to Orville's coming out party. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a good time. <laughs> it is a good time. Now, here's the funny thing that I didn't actually know until I did some homework on this episode, is that this movie is, a, is, a, is actually big in the gay community. Because two of the main people are gay characters, and they're not, I mean, they're a little cliche, but they're not negatively. They're like, nobody's yeah. being like awful or yeah. like, oh, you know, they're, they're not being demonized. So that's awesome. I, didn't, I totally didn't even put that all together, but it's true. Alan Ornsby, who plays the main guy who, you know, brings back Orville. There's not yeah. even, there's not even like any kind of real voodoo till like the end of the movie. And of course, it's, not voodoo. <laughs> no, it's in Florida. I love that. Uh, they 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 film this back to back with the other Bob Clark movie called Death Dream, which I highly recommend. Oh yeah, that movie's good. Yeah, it is. Yeah, talk, it is. Talk about another good career, man. Bob Clark, Black Christmas, <laughs> Christmas Story. Right. I mean, he's got all the holidays. Uh, Porky's. Covered. Uh, Porky's. Yeah. yeah, he did. He just jumped around genres. He did one of my favorite Sherlock Holmes movies. It's him versus the uh, uh, the Jack the Ripper. It's fantastic. It's called Murder by Decree. And uh, it's fucking amazing. He made it at the same time, around the same time, he right before um, he did Porky's, this movie, and then I believe A Christmas Story all in a row. So good time. He was going to do a remake of Children uh, Shouldn't Play With Dead Thing, but of course, he died, so that hmm. sucks. Yeah. Boo. Boo. Death. I got Zombie 2 up there. Zombie 2. That's electric classic. Electric Boogaloo. Oh, <laughs> zombie 2, Electric Boogaloo. So also, Zombie 2, also known as Zombie, also known as Zombie 2. Uh, it's very confusing because you're like, well, which one was Zombie 1? And you're like, well, that is Zombie 1. You're like, well, why is it called Zombie 2? You're like, well, because it's uh, called Zombie 2 over there, called Zombie Here. Yeah, well, it's very confusing. You're trying to, you're trying to make some money. That's what we're trying to do. <laughs> They're making money off of Dario Argento's cut of Dawn of the Dead. In, in Italy, he had the rights. That, that was the agreement to, between uh, Dario Argento and George Romero, is that he could have his own cut in his own country and rename it. He did. He added different music. Like if you buy the, like the box set now, it's got yeah. like the Spanish version or the, the Italian version, uncut version, all these other different versions. If you just watch the Dario Argento movie, it's called Zombie. Yeah. So here's Faulty trying to do something awesome and cash in. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if these guys like secretly hated each other. Like Faulty just calls them, be like, "Hey, motherfucker, guess what? I'm gonna make a movie called Zombie Two. There's nothing you can do about it." And just hangs up. Yeah. <laughs> Eat that. <laughs> calls him at 3 a.m. 
Just to let him know. It's even more confusing because the sequels, it goes like Zombie 3, 4, and 5. But actually, Zombie 5 is actually the fourth one in the series, even though it's called Zombie 5, Killing Birds. I love you, Ace. It's, like, it's super confusing. <laughs> well, it, okay. There's other movies called Zombie that are sequels to those movies that have nothing to do with it. I have two different movies called Zombie 4. Yeah, well, <laughs> or Zombie 4, Zombie 3, it's all kind of, in, it's, it, especially back when the box set <laughs> came up from like different. Anchor Bay, I think they put it out. And that made it even more confusing because you have you know Black Demon, and yeah. like it's supposed to be... Demony 3, which is yeah. Demons 3. It's like, it's all, what the fuck is going on? I don't know. Is that Zombie 3? You're, you're confusing the shit out of me. Yeah. But that's how, it, you know, we've talked about this before, is that when things get renamed or even just put out a, a different time to cash in on this on somebody's property, yeah. it happens, man. It's literally like Italy, mm. there are no copyright laws there. <laughs> like, I know. It's like, you can do just whatever you it. want. It's like, oh yeah, you got a movie called Terminator? I'm making Terminator 2, Shocking Dark. <laughs> Nothing you can do about it. Shocking dark. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but Lady Terminator is actually pretty good. And Lady Terminator. It's sorry. great. <laughs> Before the internet was actually useful, I looked for Zombie 1 for like years at conventions. <laughs> before I could figure out that that's, that didn't exist. You already <laughs> owned it the whole time. Corey, <laughs> chiming in. You scared the shit out of me, by the way, because nobody's mouths were moving. <laughs> that I was looking at. No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Telepathically. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so the thing about, I remember about Zombie 2. When I when the internet actually became a thing, I sneak down to during the work times and get on the. Remember, like the lap, like a, the computer room. Everybody at, has a computer. room. Yeah, but yeah. not at work. It was a cool thing. Yeah. Fuck you guys. All right. <laughs> <laughs> was the the writer for this movie has more credits under his name than Argento or Fulci or even Bobby? He, this guy wrote like Shock. He did Cat of Nine Tails. He did. All of Fulci's uh, uh, zombie trilogy, like Lovecraft trilogy, uh, Amityville 2. He's done so many things. New York Ripper. Um, I should have made notes on all this, but I didn't. I'm just pulling it out of my head. But that guy writes some of my favorite Italian movies. I fucking yeah. love him. He doesn't get enough love. So there you go. Well, from there, you go from 79 <laughs> all the way to well, 87. You can't go past Zombie 2 without can- talking about a shark shark fighting a zombie. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Music yeah. by uh, uh, what, Fabio Fritzi. And, yeah, that's uh, a great soundtrack. Um, that. Scene with the zombies walking down the Brooklyn Bridge. That was a big deal. It. That, that was, was like that deal. was like that times uh, twenty eight days later. They like how yeah. the fuck did they do that? Yeah, Which, yeah it was really cool. When you're looking at it now, you're like, it's supposed to be like an apocalyptic scenario where like the zombies are coming to New York, but like underneath them, it's just traffic as usual. <laughs> <laughs> just, there's still cars driving by. Like we couldn't stop this part of the bridge. or like just film it. Yeah, just film them people, Because people in New York be like, get out of my way, you douchebag. <laughs> yeah, oh it's, man, it's like I got how, places to be. <laughs> Because people in New York are fucking rude. <laughs> yeah. But I won't elaborate. Anyway, Zombie 2, oh. all the way to Labyrinth. La- <laughs> <laughs> Labyrinth. <laughs> we are going to do a dark uh, fantasy episode. I think we should, and it'd be fun to include that uh, on it. Well, we could do that, but he does sing a song. Yeah, he does. About voodoo, Steve. Voodoo? Voodoo. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the song. I mean, I guess. I don't know. You'd have to sing the rest of it for me before I would know. <laughs> <laughs> fuck off. Go ahead, man. Steve. Oh, my God. Fuck off. No. Uh, all right. Oh, all God. right. That's fine. I've got Angel Heart up there. We Next already week. talked about this. I'm bummed now. Uh, <laughs> damn it. Yeah, we did talk about Angel Heart. We did. Um, we did a whole episode on Satanic Panic. Yeah, it was good. And that came up. And Angel Heart with. Uh, with uh, Mickey Rourke. Mickey Rourke, yeah. R- 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 Bobby De Niro. Robert De Niro, yeah. Lisa Bonet. And I did find out uh, that I didn't remember, I didn't find, I didn't know back then, didn't remember because I didn't know it, uh, that Dustin Hoffman was going to play the Mickey Rourke ca- character at one point. I was like, what, what the <laughs> fuck? I think he did Rain Man instead and I, made a I, whole lot more money. I guess, man. They were supposed to do a remake of Angel Heart in 2007, I think, or 2009. It'll happen. Nothing, it, it should. It's a great book and it's a great idea. I think the movie's actually better than the book which is interesting because it's the same like he wrote his own screenplay originally and then alan parker took it over and was like no we're gonna add in new orleans and then we're gonna add this in i mean it's all suggested in the book but they don't go they all just stay in new york i thought that was the best parts of the fucking movie yeah. so there you go angel heart we're not gonna go back over it again no we shouldn't we shouldn't but it was good it was good uh oh man of, that's one of my favorite lots, uh, lots z- of- zombie movies 
Probably the mm-hmm. only. There's Robert, no zombies in it. There's zombies in it. Robert De Niro is probably the only horror movie he did. I mean, I can't think of anything else that he would have done that would have been remotely horror. I'm yeah. not even going to fucking try to think of it. I mean, <laughs> I, mean I don't know. That's a, I can't think of anything else. Cape Fear my head. is pretty Cape fucking Fear. terrifying. Sorry, Cape Fear, Cape sorry. Fear. There you yeah. Go. yeah, sorry. I'm an idiot. Nerd. No, you're not an idiot. <laughs> it's just so hard to take keep track of so many movies, especially when you're on the spot in front of a microphone. Yeah, God, yeah, and I love Cape Fear so much. Speaking, speaking of oiled up bodies. What a great remake. Zombie Nightmare. Zombie. Oh, oh yeah, baby. Oh, God. That's a good way. You talk about Cape Fear, and you've got Bobby D, like, pumping some iron, and now you've got Thor. John yeah. Michael Thor. I call him Milky. John Milky. <laughs> Thor. John Milky Thor. God, he'd be the worst person to fucking be in a room with. So the we di- did. We talked about this on the heavy metal episode. We did. Um, like, but something I didn't. Uh, well, I we maybe discussed. I can't remember. We the thing about this movie is did, did John Fasano direct it or did he just write it? Because like Jack, uh, what's his name, Braveman. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think from what I read recently that I didn't know then was that John Fasano pretty much directed the whole movie. Yeah. It says he's uncredited. Well, of course. But you know, you don't want to take credit for something. I mean, you know, maybe he saw the nice. final product and he's like, eh, no. he added like, oh, I'm only going to add an hour onto the movie. Is that cool? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the fucking director's cut like Dune. Yeah. <laughs> There's a five hour copy of Zombie Nightmare out there somewhere, guys. Yes. Go get it. It's an Alan Smithy version. It's just there's, there's there's another hour of Thor oiling himself up and fucking arm wrestling the devil. Yeah, Vinegar Syndrome's gonna put that out <laughs> next year. <laughs> Black Friday's coming up, guys. Hey, I've got friends who work there, man. I'll I'll put the word in. Please don't. Uh, <laughs> so so that, that movie's uh the movie there uh, it's it's whole voodoo tie is uh the uh, he gets hit by a car full of teenage stereotypes. She's talking about Milky. Yeah. John Milky Thor. He's a softball player. He plays baseball. Um, they get a Haitian voodoo priestess, resurrects Tony as a zombie, and uses her powers to guide him to the teenagers, aiding him in his revenge. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And that's, it, it is a revenge movie, and there's there actually is a lot of voodoo in this quote-unquote yeah. voodoo. Could you imagine if he kicked your door down? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm here to fuck shit up. Yeah, in a baseball cap and some armor. <laughs> It's like I'm bringing Scantily thunder clad. onto tundra. He's like, did fucking who who let fucking He Man out? What the fuck is this shit? I, he did look just <laughs> like He Man back then. How yeah. did they get Adam West? Did we even discuss that on the oh, heavy metal episode? How no, did they get Adam barely. West? Tia Carrera was like nothing. She's like yeah. nineteen. Oh, throw money at somebody who like throw me money at me at nineteen. I'm like, okay, I'll be in it. Adam West was uh, that got him because he was post Batman pre Family Guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, in that weird middle ground where everybody was like, who the fuck is Adam West? You got to work, man. You got to work. Yeah. Sometimes you got to do things you're not proud of, Steve. And sometimes those things are zombie nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good. I, I I like it because I love as we say this piece of shit, but uh, it's not a good movie. No, it, it's uh, it's a really good episode of Mystery Science Theater 3000. Though. It is on there. Yeah, that's right. I forgot they did that. Yeah. That's fucking great. It's also got Motorhead at the beginning of the credits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good soundtrack. So what is what is the next one, Steve? What uh, is that? Serpent in the Rambo. Oh, yeah. Ooh. This Dave, might go, be the one. Wes Craven's scariest film, hands down. So Dave Fight wants me. To, yeah, Dave wants to put this out there. So <laughs> hit us in the comments on the YouTube channel and be like, what? It is. It is like, oh, you scared of spiders? We got those. You scared of being buried alive? We got that too. You want to be buried alive with a fucking spider? We got that. Snakes? We got that. I mean, somebody gets their fucking nutsack hit with a railroad tie. Yeah, it does. I do. Yeah, oh, it does. Yeah. <clears throat> it's it's a vicious, vicious movie about some Harvard prick that works for Big Pharma that goes to Haiti to get drugs because they send them out on these they send them out on these trips they're like go to this rainforest and find this drug we can help people because we know what all pharmacy companies want to do they really just want to help people money has nothing to do with it (laughs) no god i couldn't i can't believe you would suggest that and you know he just goes to haiti he goes to haiti and he's like i'm gonna find this because there's a drug that that brought this guy back and this is before the internet so he saw a video this guy came back to life yeah, He's gonna go find this drug, this miracle drug. Which I don't think that was enough evidence for me to like hop on a plane to Haiti, and just yeah. in a war torn country and try to find. Dude, a- people went to the woods to find fucking Bigfoot. Did you ever see that video? <laughs> <laughs> that was, might have been more believable. Yeah, well that that is that is Pil- Pullman's job, Bill Pullman, who's actually actually amazing in this film. He's this, really good. This is before he was president, right? Oh yeah, yeah. way okay. before, way before. And uh, let's see, it's oh, what's the guy? I had to write it down. Zeke's Moke. Yes, he is awesome, and you will you will not know his name. Most people won't know his name, but if you saw him and heard his voice, 
Oh, oh man, he's terrifying. He's so good. He's, he's one of my terrifying. favorite bad guys. I want to hear you scream. It's yeah, like, I, want I want to hear you scream. Yeah, he's he, like, ah. he's Captain Petrob in this, and he's in Waterworld. He's in Vampire in Brooklyn, and he's also in Oz, the TV show. Yes. So yeah, that, every time I see that guy's face, I think of the scene. It's like five minutes in, where like the he goes to get the um, he gets something else. Like, I think he's in Brazil or something. Or he's in like the Amazon. That's it's really hard to tell because it's just like, oh, you know, there's dark people and there's yeah. there's a woods. I was like, okay, whatever. There's a witch doctor. <laughs> yeah, it's a little racist, yeah. but it, like where he closes the cloak and then Bill Pullman opens it and oh, it's yeah. his character just shaking, looking at him. I'm like, oh, I'm in. I'm I'm dig. I'll just do this. I am yeah, balls deep in this the, movie. The movie's really good. It fucks with your mind. There's that. Uh, there's that, that that mental battle he has with Bill Pullman at the end. Yeah, yeah the, the mind fuck area. But I mean, you know, like. I could talk about this movie. We, we should talk about it some in depth one day. It's yeah. got the but oh well. I mean, the score is by Brad Fidel, who did like Fright Night, which is one of my favorite soundtracks of all time. <laughs> anyway, sorry. And if you own the CD of the soundtrack, you need to fucking hold on to that and make sure it's in really good condition because they did not make a lot of those. Oh yeah, just mental note. As a soundtrack collector myself, yeah, it's one of those they just didn't put a lot out because they didn't put a lot into the release of this movie. Yeah. Hmm. This People, movie, like this movie, has like one of my favorite things, which is where well, you're in a town and everyone's against you, and you don't realize it. It's got a Wicker Man feel. Yeah, to it's it. very yeah. like it's like, very. And also, but Bill mean, Pullman has so many chances to leave. Yeah, they tell him to does. leave. Like he fucking, you know, he, like fuck, he, like, uh, he pulls him into his fucking his, his his office. He's like, you need to get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I mean, they do everything. They fucking. I would have been gone then. Yeah. When he was like, "Get out of here," and I would have been like, "Okay, man, I'm out." You need to get out of here. <laughs> he's like, he's like, you need to get out of here. We're gonna kill you. And he's just like, oh, "I've got money." <laughs> and but when they fucking strap him to that chair, like, nope, like, like it's fucking terrifying. Like, and if you've never seen the movie, if you've seen the movie like Casino Royale, it's almost a similar scene. It's very similar. Where fucking Bond is just sitting there naked, and you know he's got people <laughs> around him like trying to torture him, but like. So Bill Pullman is uh, strapped down to this uh, to this chair. It's like the size of an electric chair, like a real one. It's <clears> and, heavy uh, duty. It's not going anywhere. You're Captain, not getting out of this. No. Pap- Captain Petrod is uh, standing in front of him with uh, just 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 staring at him, fucking menacingly. Yeah, he's like scream. He's like, ah! yeah, dude. yeah. He's he like, just no, tells no, no, him. No, he's no, like, no, he's no, like no, I want to no. hear you scream, and he screams, and he's like, that's. That doesn't work for me. I forget what it, <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't say it like that. He says something else. I would love that be in the script. No, nope. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't good. That wasn't good. But uh, then, like, they two guys come out and they fucking separate his legs, and you're like, "Oh, what's he doing? Oh, he's got a hammer, and that's a spike. Yeah. Oh, he put yeah. it on the ta- he put it on the chair, and just right through his fucking balls." Uh, and we and, have friends that actually do that for a living and have fun with it, but it's there's they're, it's not a goddamn railroad spike. No. Do we? Yeah. We, okay. Oh, I do. I, maybe I don't know. That, maybe I don't I know. A, I have a <laughs> lot of sideshow <laughs> friends, and we all we have do. mutual friends, and I have a personal and they, friend. They dump him on the side of the road, and that's not what makes him want to leave. I know. Yeah, he's like, I'm an archaeologist. I got to go s- find he's, out what's going he's on. You got to sell your bag, shut fucking <laughs> asshole. Yeah. He's like a dumb Indiana Jones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Indiana Jones is pretty dumb, too. He's just well, like, fuck it. I don't know. This. If Indiana Jones got a railroad tie through his dick, he probably would have left. Yeah, but he doesn't make millions. This guy's getting paid millions because he pays people millions. Yeah. And it was great because he tried to pay him off, too. He's like, do you want money? They're like, we don't want your money. No. Like, yeah, fuck him. We own this country. We're like, what are you talking about? Yeah, and then they get him to leave by murdering the girl that he was with. Yeah. <laughs> Like, so I, I wrote the uh, I wrote the name of the book that this is based off of. It's called The Serpent and the Rainbow, A Harvard Scientist's Astonishing Journey in the Secret Societies of Haitian Voodoo, Zombies, and Magic by Wade Davis. That sounds like a light read. Right. Based on the experiences of Clarvis, or Clarvis, uh, Narcissi, who was a zombie for over two years on that drug, the tetrodotoxin. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Which is which which has been proven to be bullshit. Yeah. The, uh, and and even the movie's like work. the movie's like, oh, this has been going on. And then they have been working on that uh that what I just said. <laughs> I can re say it. I don't think I could say it again. Uh since like the like the mid eighties before this movie was even born, and they realized like, no, a lot of this is not has nothing to do with it. But there is something that happened on the set, and I know I've mentioned this before on the podcast, and I'm gonna go through it a little bit more here. The co writer 
had a mental breakdown while filming, and he had to be put on a plane to go home because there's a story that I think it's in the special features of one of the damn discs. It might even be on the uh, VHS I've got here because they put the making of it behind it like at the end. And Wes Craven talks about, like, you know, something, something, something. You shouldn't be here. And they're like, well, you know, we're, we're, I want to go on a, on a quest or whatever. I'm, I'm going to find out what's going on. He's like, well, then you will. And he said he didn't wake up for, like, he woke up, like, two days later or something like that where wow. they blew something in his face. I need to find that, uh, that interview and put it in the comment section or, like, in the description of this video. And I want to find that so much because I, I, I tried to find it. And write it down, but I just wrote down from what I could remember. But that's 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 fucking crazy. So whatever the hell that is, you no, think? You no, think it, no, no. You think anybody had a mental break when they were filming Nightmare on Elm Street? <laughs> <laughs> Same. This, Johnny, has, this has to be a scary Johnny film. Depp. He, was, <laughs> I don't he know. fucking Werner Herzog just fucking crew man. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. And they actually had to leave um, Haiti because they were uh, they were no longer safe. So some of that stuff was filmed somewhere else. Serpent of the Rainbow. Man. It's underrated. Big it time. is underrated. Yeah. Yeah, and if you haven't seen it, like just fucking forget what I said and just watch it. Just don't be just don't be scared of anything cuz Wes Craven takes every every major phobia and just puts it in that fucking movie. Yeah. yeah. And if Mortician sampled it and put it in one of their songs, you know it's a good movie. You know it's a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> They're on tour. <laughs> so from a whisper to a scream, 1987. Did anybody watch that one? Nope. I did. Oh, nice. Oh, Ace did. I did. Directed it's, by uh, Jeff Burr. Tell me about this one, Ace. It's a uh, little tale. He's got to find the <laughs> <in his laughs> notes. Sorry. sorry. Yeah, it's the second segment of the... It's a uh, different segments of horror movies where Vincent Price is like telling yeah, stories anthology. to this woman. It's an anthology. Um, it's really good. Uh, the whole movie's really good, but the main thing about this, which we're talking about now, would be the voodoo, which is the second segment. Um it's an escape slave uses voodoo to stay alive forever, basically. Yeah, it's called On the Run. Yeah. And uh, this white dude who gets killed by some people he owed money to, he picks him up off the side of the road, uses it to bring him back to life. Um, and the guy realizes what he he sees, these clippings of him where he's, it's like it's where he finds out this guy's like, he's like, oh, this guy's been around for like over 100 years. So he's like, I want your, I want the secret, I want your secret, give it to me. And they get in a big fight. Uh, then Seems he to be the story of every voodoo movie. I want yeah, your I secrets, give and them then, to me. Then the, uh, the dumb white guy doesn't realize he already had the potion put in him. And this guy like basically just like fucks him up. <laughs> and then he has to live the rest of his days like all burned up and like disfigured and stuff because that guy... Didn't realize he was jokes on him. Live forever. Jokes on him. It's a twist. <laughs> it's a twist ending. It's really good. It's a I great like anthology, it. actually. That's a really bad. No, and <laughs> it's a very low budget it, movie. But, I mean, yeah. Jeff Burr. This is like his second movie. He hadn't done uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part Three or Pumpkinhead Two. Yeah, you know, he hadn't done any of that stuff yet, and he was able to get Vincent Price for this movie. Yeah, so, what you're saying is he hadn't peaked yet. Not even close. From what I've Pumpkin read, head to. from what I read, much to <laughs> Vincent Price's chagrin. <laughs> right. Okay. So I actually wrote down. I'm going to quote this. This is Jeff Burr's story on how he was able to get Vincent Price. Huh, it's called "We Came Bearing Gifts," and you wouldn't know. And it's, it's called "It's Called We Came Bearing Gifts," and it starts with "We Came Bearing Gifts," and you wouldn't know that you wouldn't believe it. But he opened the door to him, himself as we knocked. It was a it was like a flurry of like, gee, Mr. Price, we're fans of, how you're, of your work. And we wrote this script and he actually invited us inside. Us, inside, me and a brain partner. <laughs> this is, these are quotes. Security. He had a very, he had every reason to ignore us and tell us to get the hell out of here or just be polite and say, talk to my, talk to my agent. But he said, no, it's okay, boys, come on in. So he was gracious, he invited us in, sat down, talked to us for about 15 minutes, took the script, and that's how it all started. Hmm. That's hmm. how you get Vincent Price. Yeah. Because what was he doing at that time? He was knocking on heaven's door, man. <laughs> right, <laughs> it, was, it was close. Yeah, he hadn't even done, like, was it uh, Edward Scissorhands yet? He had that yeah. script on his desk, and he's like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> there are interviews with him who saying that he was the script was misrepresented, but if you listen to that story, he knew exactly. He was just trying yeah. to play it off. Yeah. But it's good. good. The first segment's got uh, Clue Gallagher in it. Yeah, he does. And he just and had a birthday. And it's really good. Like, um, 
He just has like a, it's like him and his sister, and they have a very weird relationship. <laughs> 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 he gives her baths. It's yeah, well, the, uh, very strange. The, the, I remember the third one. It's called uh, Love's Crafts Traveling Museum or Amusements or something like that. Yeah. That was a cool one, too. Yeah. I just, I liked, I, li- I love anthology movies, anyways. Yeah. It's I mean, got good you, effects, too. Like everything looks good. It's for like, as cheap as they yeah. got that, fuck yeah, man. See, speaking of anthology, you sort of missed it. Trilogy of Terror. It's on every voodoo movie list, and the only thing I can think of it's is It's not the, really voodoo. It though. isn't wow. really voodoo. Uh, the short, because it's a trilogy. Oh, the, the Karen Black segment. Amelia. Yeah. Well, yeah. Karen Black's in all of them. Finished. Well, yeah, good point. <laughs> <laughs> Which <laughs> one, the Steve? Zoomy doll. Yeah, you get the little, little Zuni doll, and I guess that's where they get the uh, the voodoo. I just had problems Which with it. It's like a fundamentally. fetish doll or something? Yeah, Zo- the Zuni fetish doll. Zuni fetish doll, yeah. Little, little fucking Which is just fangs. like, Aye! <laughs> like the whole thing, chasing her around the house. <laughs> the As a kid that terrified the fuck out of me. And this, was, oh, a, yeah. this was a made-for-TV film, too, wasn't it? it was oh, a, yeah. ABC. Yeah, yeah. ABC, ABC movie of the week. I think it was made by the same guy who did uh, like Dark Shadows and Night Stalker and all that stuff. Yeah, we're written by Richard Matheson and uh, William Nolan. He's a le- Richard Matheson's a legend. Yeah. Like, he's, like, he also wrote I Am Legend. Yes, but, he did. <laughs> but he also, he also wrote a lot of, some Twilight Zone episodes <laughs> that are really good, which is... Uh, he wrote the one with. Uh, Does it have voodoo in it? On the airplane. <laughs> no, but they're on the airplane. Nightmare 20,000 feet. Nightmare 20,000 feet. Yeah, yeah that's a good one. Could have could could been some voodoo in there. But uh, yeah, that, that that's the only one that, that relates to it. But it's on every list. You look at it and they're like, Trilogy of Terror. And I'm like, it's not really. Yeah, it's why? Not a, I didn't even write it down because. Well, I, I mean, I guess it. it has possession because she kills the little Zuni thing and it possesses her. Spoiler. Yeah. Um, but it's just like a, it's just like watching a fucking. Like uh, Scooby Doo, she's just running from this thing, and it's got a knife, and it's just fucking moving around, <laughs> little yeah. puppet. Nah, 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 nah. And uh, uh, my only complaint is like uh, they put it in a suitcase, and if she'd have bought better luggage, there's no way it would have gotten out of that suitcase. No. If it had been real leather, like real, like not like we're not talking J C Penney's leather, we're talking about real leather. Oh, it'd have been stuck. More of those old awful <laughs> fucking. More <laughs> of those old luggage commercials where like the gorilla is beating them up, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember that, Steve. Fuck, I'm old. It's kind of like, you know who did it better? The Simpsons pretty much ripped that off, and they had that one where, like... The the, Krusty Doll. They had the little Krusty Doll, and the guy was like, see what your problem here is, you have it turned on evil. (laughs) (laughs) He puts it on good. (laughs) I know. Well, talking about dolls, I've got Child's Play up there. Yeah. See, that's what I think of when I think think of voodoo. What a segue. Because... (laughs) Hey, man, it's right there. Because uh, because, uh, there's uh, two things. One, you got Charles Lee Ray, which we're going to do a Child's Play episode soon, so we won't... We won't we we won't go too too far in depth, but he he uses voodoo to put his soul into this doll, this good guy doll, because he's a good guy, right? Oh yeah, no, he's a friend of the end, Dave. <clears throat> but yeah. you know there is there are things like the voodoo doll that's brought up into this. He confronts he confronts his uh, master, the guy that taught him everything about voodoo, and he won't tell him. So what's he do? He brings out his voodoo doll. He breaks his twists the leg, leg breaks. <laughs> Threatens him again. He's like, break your arm. So he breaks it, twists it, breaks his arm. He stabs him, kills him. It's a badass scene. Because it's a voodoo doll. And that's, that was, I think that's used in a lot of, a lot of other movies too. It is. And it's not even in voodoo. No, it's not. No, you can go, you will get, you will see it in every little shop, all that. It's, it's from Haitian voodoo or whatever. How you want to pronounce that? V O D O U, which is different from like what we're trying to talk about, which is like mainly, uh, the uh, like New Orleans, Louisiana, yeah. and the Creole. So I made a note about that. It's like there are things that are have no connection. So voodoo dolls actually came from Europe and not Africa. Mojo bags, the Grigri, whatever however you want to pronounce it, originated in Ghana and uh, Daguba, not Dagaba, and is adorned <laughs> with Islamic scriptures because it was mainly an Islamic tradition made to ward off evil. Was adopted by Louis- Louisiana voodoo. But not originally voodoo. Well, where do shrunken heads come from? Then? Hand of Glory. I don't know that one. I didn't actually uh, look that one up, but please do. The Hand of Glory. A dried and pickled left-handed but hanged man originated from the French, uh, as in main de glory. It was also a European belief that if you put a lit candle in the hand, you would render all who saw it motionless, and the flame could only be put out by milk. This is not a voodoo thing, no, no, but it's, it's, it's like appropriation, man. Yeah. That's all. I remember I was like, it's, we're going to talk about that, yeah. Because that's such a great fucking scene in Child's Play. Yeah. Where he's torturing the person who taught him the magics. Because he knows he's evil. Dan Bella. Also Haitian. Yeah. 
So it's a Haitian Creole chant. Yeah, people like those words that are associated with what we're talking about. Uh, that style of voodoo is not like Dambella, uh, Baron Zemedi, uh, or however you pronounce it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Papa Legba, people, you'll hear that. that. Those are all terms and things that have nothing to do with Louis- original Creole, Louisiana, New Orleans voodoo. Well, it's just a it's just a melting pot in cinema. It's just like you can you can relate it in any way. Yeah, I mean, look at the we'll look at the um, shit hatchet ha- or hatchet. absolutely ha- yeah hatchet hatchet too. Uh, you get uh, Tony Todd voodoo exactly. That's great. Yeah, but you will also go down to any con- any not just country but any state any city whatever that is like say it's a it's the, it's the Catholic farm. You go in there and they'll be like, well, that's actually Baptist, but we just sell it here because it makes money. Yeah. You go into those kind of shops. I mean, I've been to Memphis where they have all kinds of like altars and things like that, uh, but not on the ones on Beale Street are all like hot topics, man. Oh yeah, yeah, they all there are shit ton of voodoo stuff in there, but the voodoo dolls and it's yeah. just like wow, shrunken heads. Like you just brought up, I've completely forgot about that cliche when it comes to voodoo, but none of these movies that we're watching right now really address that. No, no, I remember the Vincent Price shrunken head like kit I could buy from a comic book when I was a kid. Yeah, some so this is a uh, com- document. Uh, this is the northwestern region of the Amazonian forests. Yeah, so just not even close. No, Peru, Ecuador. <laughs> <laughs> Again, anything that's Wrong black continent. and magical. Ooh, we got to put it all together. It's like people are sitting around in a like writer's room and they're like, we got to figure out some way where this guy goes from normal to fucked up. And some guys are just like, ah, voodoo. I don't know. And they're like, <laughs> put it in the movie. <laughs> One of my favorite episodes, I just, we were just kind of, I barely even said it, but uh, there's a show called Kolshak the Night Stalker. One oh, of my yeah. favorite episodes is called The Zombie. And it's terrifying. It's the one where he's, that's like uh, these mafia guys are all getting killed up in Chicago and they're all getting broken in half by a guy that was wronged by them whose mom is a voodoo priestess. So she brings him back and he. <laughs> Takes the bus around town. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. And he's rotted and fucked up looking, but you never really see his face. But you can see, like, like at one point, Kolchak, the, the, the investigator, his name's Kolchak, he jumps on a bus that the zombie just got on, and you can see the back of his head, like, all boils and bubbly and shit. I'm like, and he's just on the bus. One, did he bring change? <laughs> like, he's got a fast pass. I guess. <laughs> yeah. No, sorry. Kolchak, public transport. <laughs> and it's a great episode where it's got voodoo, a voodoo priestess. He actually looks up and he tells you all these facts that don't make any real sense when it comes to actual voodoo. You have to sew the zombie's mouth shut while putting salt in it. And I'm like, who the fuck is doing that to a zombie? Golly. <laughs> but there's a scene where he has to go, uh, creep into this old, like, broken down, um, what do you call it? Goddamn, car graveyard. What are they called? Junkyard. Junkyard. Thank you, guys. Salvage yard. Yes. And he has to crawl inside of a hearse <laughs> that this body is laying in, and he crawls next to it, lights all these little candles while the zombie's asleep, and he's just sweating. And I'm sweating watching this scene. The music's right. perfect. It's a, it's something I... You should definitely seek it out. They just put it on Blu-ray. Cole Shack the Night Stalker. They made two TV shows, two TV movies to follow that. Uh, the Night Stalker and the Night Strangler, but... One of my favorite episodes it's of that. It's been on my list forever to watch. A Motherfucker, buy yeah. it, man! It's so good. So we'll have a watch party. Speaking <laughs> of other TV shows, X Files. X Files did one. I see. I forgot about it. There was an episode called Fresh Bones. That was an oh, X Files nice. episode where they where they touch on voodoo. And it's been so long since I've seen it because it was season fucking two. Oh <laughs> yeah, those are my favorite. See the X Files <laughs> like season one and two when it was like Monster of the Week. Right, yeah. those were the best ones. And I hated it, it when they went to like. More of like, a, hey, if you missed last week, you're never going to know what's going on this week. Oh, yeah. The underlining, like the whole story arc going yeah. on. I liked it. It was just like, hey, what town are we in this week? There's a crazy guy. There's a monster. Let's figure it out. Yeah. Wrap it all up in one episode. We're done. That like, is hilarious because Chris Carter has quoted many times as saying that Night Stalker is the reason how you made X-Files. So good one. Yeah. X-Files, Dave. Ta-da. Did you bring it up? That used to be I an did. event, man. X Files came on. You were at home watching it. Oh yeah, that's right. it was oh absolutely. It's yeah. back when they wouldn't let Gillian Anderson lose weight. Yeah, which was really weird because yeah. you're supposed to have sexy Fox. And they had like a g- you fucked up, man. When she got, I mean, she's always hot. Yeah. Like when they when she was allowed to lose weight, I'm like, fuck you. Okay, you yeah. know what? I don't want to go into that. And but. they had a guy on the show called Cancer Man that smoked all the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, dude. right, right, right. That was fucking in your face. But that was the sexiest duo on TV forever, man. Plus those names, they Scully. Mulder. Scully, I mean, we're not going to go. We're not going to get in the fucking tangent. <laughs> we don't care about his fucking lost kid. We're gonna. 
<laughs> Maybe if he knew some voodoo, he could bring him back. So let's go to uh, what's next? Yeah, Voodoo Dawn. Don't know shit about that. Oh what, man, what is that? I, I wish I got Tales from the Hood did that. Well, Tales from the Hood. We're yeah. getting to that. Are we? That, we're not there yet. We're, the, no, no, we're on. Uh, I, I've got Voodoo Dawn on the wall there. I've got uh, Demoni Three, which we kind of talked about. The uh, Umberto Lindsay. Uh, also known as Black Demons, uh, and then you've got Baba made a movie called Demon Three, which is known. As, it's actually the Ogre, which is a major television movie, which has nothing to do with voodoo or zombies. I've never seen that. It's par for the course for the Italians. Yeah, <laughs> I love one. I love I love Demons One and Two. I've never watched that third one. Yeah, uh, that's what it, that's what's called in in Italy is Demoni Three. Uh, but shock them dead. Oh, shock them dead rules. Yeah, let's talk about some quadros and some Tracy Lords. Yeah, Tracy Lords of Ma- Michelangelo Badio. <laughs> he has the double neck guitar. Yeah. <laughs> cool. It's a Mark Freed movie uh, starring Steve Quadros, who most people, we've touched upon this one time before, and I cannot remember the episode, but it was back when we had Derek, and he was It like, was probably the heavy metal We did the heavy episode. metal episode. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. So, I mean, we won't have to go too much into it, but I know you're itching to talk about it, Ace. Oh, uh, yeah, guy makes a deal. The guy wants to be a rock star. And he, don't we all? <laughs> he goes and tries out for this band, and they're like, I can't remember the song they're singing at the in the movie, but it's, it's like, uh, it's I just remember really, the really, really long bad. fucking solo, double neck solo. Yeah, but he sells his. Uh, he makes a deal with a voodoo priestess. She promises him the fulfillment of all his dreams. And he wakes if he up swears bed. obedience to her. Yeah, that's right. And he wakes up in bed with ladies, and he can play guitar. They have to drink your blood, but you can kill him with like, yeah. yeah. He can't eat food. He has to kill people to live. Well, yeah. I mean, most rock stars in the 80s didn't eat food. They just lived off cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> there's one really good part in that movie where he's like, if like there's, they're working at a pizza place, which has a like h- hole drilled in the wall so he can watch women change. So you're like, this is supposed to be the guy you feel like he's like the hero of the story. And you're like, oh, he's also a sexual predator. That's nice. Yeah, he's pretty bad. <laughs> but he like he shows back up at the pizza place later on and like literally like looks in the window and he goes... <laughs> Give me a fucking pizza. (laughs) (laughs) Shock him dead, everybody. (laughs) Now we can talk about Tales from the Hood if you want. 1995. That's right. That's when we get back to that's 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 when we start get back into the uh, black exploitation horror horror era again. Um, Tales from the Hood, man. Good soundtrack. Rap song on the soundtrack that makes it good. Yeah, it does. Horror (laughs) horror films with rap songs are great. What do you got from this one, Steve? Not much. I thought Not you much. guys had more. I got it. KKK Go comeuppance. Yeah, that, that was that, that was that was it. That was a that was a really another great actual uh, fucking anthology movie. Actually, this movie's underrated. I um, we, we watched it at Gore Club recently. Yeah. on a Sunday, and I've, I own it. Um, but it's really good, and it and like and everything it has like a meaning, and it's like it's not just kind of like a dumb horror movie. Like everything on there, like you kind of get to the end of it, and you're like. Yes, get revenge. Right, <laughs> like, that's how it. I felt when I watched Candyman. Yeah. I'm like fuck yeah, man, it's really good. Um, the The segment of this one is there's the racist senator who's based on pretty much any senator from the South. <laughs> <laughs> just name one. Throw a throw a dart at yeah, a board. Just, You'll get Strom it. Strom Thurmond. There you go. <laughs> but uh, he like lives in the house where what they call it was Miss Cobbs, who is a hoodoo witch. Um. She has the dolls in there, and they transferred the slave souls inside the dolls that she created, and there's a painting of her surrounded by the dolls on the wall, and he's, like, going to, like, move in. There's all these people protesting at the house because everybody knows this guy's racist, and he's living in this house that he shouldn't be living in. And then all the dolls come back and get the revenge on him and kill him. As they should. <laughs> As, As they should, they which should. makes you see that, and you're like, yes, kill that old racist white man. <laughs> <laughs> so this th- this movie was directed uh, by Rusty Cundiff, um, who also he didn't he didn't do he he did a lot of television he did uh, a lot of date the Dave Chappelle show oh nice um, it was written by uh, him and Darren Scott uh, Darren Scott uh, had also written Stepfather too. <laughs> another underrated so, movie. So back, Actually, yeah. yeah. Back to Jeff Burr. <laughs> oh so, but God. he, but he also, he also did Menace to Society, Love in a Forty Five, Sprung, The Brothers, uh, Tales from the Hood Two. So he's, he's he's got a good he's got a good resume here. Um, Love in a Forty Five is great. <clears throat> Tales from the Hood Two, not so much. I didn't watch it. But I mean, the movie had like Corbin Burnson, David Allen Greer, Anthony Griffith, uh, lots of lots of people that you may not know their names. You may recognize them if you saw them. Clarence Williams III. Um, but uh, it 
it did all right in the box office. Didn't do great, but it was a, it was it was a good fun movie. I enjoyed. I think it. that was like David Alan Greer's first serious movie because before that, pretty much everybody just knew him as that guy from In Living Color. <laughs> yeah, and he was like, did the men on film <laughs> two snaps and two around s- the world? Yeah, no shit in a Z formation. <laughs> yeah. Hated it. <laughs> yeah, that was like really. And also, I saw David Alan Greer do stand up, and it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. No it was, shit. It yeah. was really good. I loved In Living Color as a kid. And I don't know how well it stands up now. I think I need to go back and watch it. I think a lot of it is. I saw some of it like years later, and I think it's more funny when I was a kid. Yeah, well, Spe- well, mainly the I think mainly the Jim Carrey stuff was a lot more funny. I don't know. I was watching a scene from it today. A clip. It was uh, Ed O'Neill and Jamie Fox telling each other your mama jokes. It was, <laughs> <laughs> it, was uh, it was fucking comedy gold. Yeah, I mean, but like some of that, it's it's interesting to go back and look at some of the the themes and like the skits from that time and go, ooh, that didn't age well. And like the men on film, I don't think that probably ages very well. No, probably not. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm just saying, I need to go back and check that out. Uh, let's see. I mean, I actually put on more movies on my own list that really have nothing to do with voodoo it's like another thing it's like dead and breakfast all those movies that just like a black magic it's like well it's not even real there are so many when you look at a list for it i saw the movie the witch on there and i was like why is this voodoo yeah that's not even yeah um so there pretty much you take any movie and say there's magic in it and there's evil and you can just throw voodoo in there and then there you go like i said throw in a dart at a board put evil in it voodoo there you go there's like uh i eat your skin Oh yeah, which is go back to the seventies. But I drink your blood. Yeah, and it's like a cancer researcher. It's always on a Caribbean island. <laughs> but they discover that by treating the natives with snake venom, he can turn them into bug-eyed zombies. That's the description. Mm, nice. Of the movie. Yeah, I actually like that movie. <laughs> yeah, and it's always if you ever watch any of those old trailers, it's always like it's always in the double pack with like I eat your skin, I drink your blood. Yeah. And then the guy, I just, it's always burned into my brain where the guy's like, I eat your skin, I drink your, your blood. blood. <laughs> There's a great band, I don't know if they're around anymore, called the Exotic Ones oh, from the Tennessee. Ones. That's the name of and one of the And they wrote a great song <laughs> called that. I drink your blood and I eat your skin. So I looked up uh, a couple of things that I thought was very interesting when it came to actual voodoo. And one of them was a few times a mother... As a, you know, as a, a priestess, uh, performed a ritual to help the community in New Orleans, and one of them in 1995 was a ritual to perform to drive out violence and drugs out of the community, which is really great. Here's another one: in in 2001, one was performed to help the Saints win a football game. <laughs> So, so to improve their chances of winning the Super Bowl, which I think two years later they did. So Maybe yeah, 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 yeah. Two years later they did <laughs> after no after Hurricane Sandy. So 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 what you basically told me is oh. a voodoo ritual is the equivalent of thoughts and prayers. I don't know. I'm not. Uh, well, <laughs> That's what you just said, dude. I didn't. I wrote it down and I repeated it. Okay. I, damn it. Uh, we could just <laughs> we could just start doing rituals for everything. A fucking football game. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure. Man. Why not? Yeah, some people are just. There is, I, I guarantee, there's probably a whole bunch of dudes who have like a voodoo doll of Tom Brady. They're just like pushing pins and like, when are you ever going to die? And apparently, <laughs> they don't know that it's all bullshit. But you know, whatever. <laughs> I was raised Catholic. All everybody ever prayed for was uh, UK to win a game. <laughs> <laughs> they would, they would do that. They would do pull the Tebow. You waste, oh. wa- waste your prayers on something like that. God, it's a, it's an interesting journey to go through film history as well as just normal just fucking American history and then knowing where a lot of this comes from in different countries and, and trying to pull facts and, and fiction and pull it apart and figure it out. I mean, I had a hell of a time trying yeah. to figure out what yeah. some of these movies are <laughs> voodoo or not. And the, and the answer is the same thing, I think, what Jay said last November when we, when we recorded The Witchcraft. Like, just watch a documentary, man. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that is true. With the exception of... You know, a couple of them. I walked with a zombie, like I said. There, they they try to go into like what actual voodoo or voodoo is. Yeah. In that movie, but I mean, you go past that, it just gets more and more ridiculous and fun. Yeah, yeah. I think some of these movies are just trying to be fun. We didn't. We barely talked about anything. Uh, let's. We haven't talked about Maniac Cop Three. Badge of Silence. That, doesn't, know, that doesn't fucking count. 
Hey, he, uh, uh, excuse me. They did bring him back through uh, of a priest practicing voodoo arts resurrected Matt Cordell in that movie. So. Oh shit, that's right. <laughs> oh yeah, I did. I saw that. It's, oh my god, it was like okay, it, it was written by Larry Cohen. God rest his soul. Yeah, and directed by Bill Lustig. Bill Lustig was so fucking pissed off that because he he they kept fucking with the script and kept messing with his script and uh, his uh, his his budget that he only gave him like a uh, forty five minute movie. Yeah. So someone else, and I forgot the guy's name, came in and finished, like, yeah. and just added a bunch of scenes that were not supposed to be in there. They kept messing with the script, like I said, and he's just like, fuck it. So now if you watch the version that I think that's put out now by his own company, Blue Underground, yeah. it's like Alan Smithy, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it also, that movie has the same church as Prince of Darkness. It does. <laughs> Jackie um, Earl Haley is in it. Dude, you know that, that cast is great, man. Robert Davi, Robert Zadar. <laughs> yep. Except Robert Davi is a fucking psychopath now. If you go to, <laughs> he's a fucking Trump conspiracy theorist. Oh, oh yeah, no. he, is, he is, man. Like I, it, they watched Maniac Cop two on uh, last cool. drive in, and someone was like, "I wonder if he's." I was like, "I wonder if Robert, you know, uh, Robert Davi's still alive." And I went to his. Tw- I was like, "Oh, he's got a Twitter." Oh. Not oh, the Wishmaster. <laughs> oh no, that's a de- well. I don't. Did he play Wishmaster? He was Wishmaster, no. right? No, 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 no. no, no, no. That, no. that was a Robert. Davi? That's a Andrew. Andrew. Oh, Dividoff. Andrew Div- Dividoff. No, Robert hey, Davi, Andrew Dividoff. It sounds kind of. We've done this before on this podcast. We we gotten these these actors confused, and it's funny. Mm. Uh, they look alike. Was, well, another one was like Arnold Vosloo, who played Dark Man in two and three. We got him. He's also in the Mummy with Brandon Fraser. I've Which got one was up. in Showgirls? <laughs> <laughs> One of those two was in there. Oh, it wasn't that Robert care. Zadar? You never forget that chin. Was. Well, not Robert. Zadar. Yeah, that Conan. <laughs> <laughs> you broke that jaw. Yeah, I took my Django and Cash. <laughs> oh man, this pig broke my neck, my back, and my <laughs> jaw. You any, broke that jaw. <laughs> any day we can get a Tango and Cash reference, and I'm happy. Oh God. Anyway, Ted Raimi's in that movie. Yeah, yeah, he is, and Jackie yeah. Earl Haley. Yeah, he right. does. He he gets he gets killed like five times in that movie. Yeah. It seems like to me. He gets Robert shot, Forrester. Shot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Bobby, <laughs> yeah. Bobby Forrester, and Robert Zadar. Robert Zadar actually would visit this area a lot because I have a friend who comes to the Gore Club who would make these really interesting movies, and Robert Zadar would just be in them. Like, yeah. okay, we're in this this episode, we're gonna fall down some steps, and it's yeah. It's Robert Zadar at the end of the steps. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is before he died. It's like a couple of years before he passed yeah. away. Super Hill, I think. No, oh, you know I what I'm talking that's about. Super okay. Hill. He plays yeah. like Granny Bob or something it's like that. It's fucking funny, yeah. man. Yeah. Very, and like zero budget movies. Oh, yeah. And they're having a good time, though. I, I appreciate that. Especially, you know, you're going to just kind of hang out with your friends and make a movie that yeah. not too many people are going to see. I mean, I think you can find it on YouTube, but. Yeah. But the best thing about, before we go on, Maniac Cop 3 has the best chase scene in a movie. Because the he's driving the cop car and it's on fire, and he literally like pulls up next to the guy that he's chasing and just like puts his foot out the car and kicks the car over. <laughs> <laughs> like it just like flips over. He's the, the maniac cop. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> and that movie's kind of a love story because I like it's at the end like they show his hand grasping Katie's hand. The girl, yeah. The, yeah. I was like, it's a love story. Damn it. But you don't get that cool song from no Maniac Dave. Cop Dave's too. shaking his head. <laughs> you don't get the Maniac Cop rap in the yeah. second, in the third one. There, there's no rap. It's not. It's not worth a shit. Which we've talked about many times. Yeah. Actually, he's the Maniac Cop. So, so I that's think, our roundup of voodoo. I think, I think we're gonna wrap it up. <laughs> so let's end it on Maniac. Cop. <laughs> hey, well, let's just end on Maniac Cop. This seems like the most relevant movie we've talked about tonight. It's totally real voodoo <sighs> too. No, it's not, Steve. It's not. But it's not. Uh, so what's uh, don't do it. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, what? What's your What's your favorite voodoo movie? I think we're all going to say the same thing, but I'm going to say, okay, you know what? I'm not going to choose choose Angel Heart, and I'm not going to choose Serpent in the Rainbow. Wizard of Oz. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Out of all of these, I'm I'm seriously. Uh, I'm going to say Scream. Uh, Scream. Blackula. Scream is way up there. Zombie Two. Fuck, I mean, there's some really good ones. Child's Play, I love the first one. Oh, we'll say Child's Play for you then. Okay, thanks, man. It's All it's right. fitting because that show is actually pretty cool. For me, it'd be toss up between Serpent and the Rainbow and Sugar Hill. Oh yeah, those are both excellent yeah. movies. God damn, yeah. Scariest Wes Craven movie ever made. Fight me. It is. I'm gonna. Yeah, that's my choice. Serpent and the Rainbow. It's the only one I think that takes it slightly seriously. Yeah, like, he did, they did their best. Yeah, everything. Oh, like if you look at any, you look at any zombie or any zombie movie before Night of the Living Dead, or anything with voodoo in it from like the 30s, 40s, and 50s. 
it just looks like a Smashing Pumpkins music video with like a bunch of people <laughs> who like who just kind of are just like yeah, this is a vehicle and a white guy is a voodoo queen, voodoo king. It's always like a white guy who's the voodoo master every time, right? Like, right. Lugosi, which is yeah. not voodoo. Yeah, and that is not. the difference between hoodoo and voodoo is that voodoo is mainly uh, a female. And Do it, what? And hoodoo is uh, fuck off is mainly voodoo? men. You do, yeah, yeah. you sons of bitches. I'm just trying. It. Hey, Steve, just sing the song for me. I'm just trying to cry as hard as I can cry. God damn Who it! Does he remind you of? Fuck remind everybody! You of the You're all on fire. You remind you? Okay, get us out of here, Dave. All right, but before we go, I'll let you know why we keep bugging you about this. So we have side bets, and we're gonna do this every time we score. Our side bet was to see who can make you sing that song. <laughs> And nobody succeeded, so nobody wins this week. I'll come up with another one for next week. Okay, you <laughs> bastards. So uh, stay tuned to see what we uh, try to gamble with on Steve. <laughs> oh, whatever you know, I'm going to do. Voodoo. All right, Voodoo. get the fuck out of here. Anyways, uh, thank you for finding us. I'm just going to turn off his mic here. Just turn it off. off. Hey, go out to Max Slaps. Oh, I'm going to slap no. the shit out of somebody. Anyways. And uh, this is the last episode of the Gore Club podcast ever. <laughs> Thanks for listening. You can find us on. Uh, I turned off your microphone, Steve. Okay. <laughs> you can find, I would have done it too. You can find us uh, on. The list is gone, but you can find us online, Spotify, Apple Music, or Apple, it fell Apple down. Play. <laughs> Like my life. God damn it. Corey, hold that sign up. I'm there on you a go. Budget here. Anchor <laughs> FM, Breaker, Google Podcast, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, Spotify, Apple Podcast, uh, Castbox, Verbal.com. You know what? If you're listening to this, you probably already found us. So whatever you found us on, please like, share, subscribe. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, uh, OnlyFans? No, not yet. Okay. So it's uh, just going to be me rubbing your foot. <laughs> <laughs> Only foot. All right. Uh, thanks to all the people that are listening to us. And, uh, Peru, Poland, it looks like new places. Maybe a VPN changer. Who knows? Anyways, we're going to get out of here. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.